All right, welcome back to Adobe Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. And today I'm gonna to give you some tips of how to increase your speed, free up some hard space, and optimize everything just so the programs run faster. Now, before we actually take a look at Lightroom and Photoshop, we're gonna take a look at my computer specifications because that's gonna have more of a factor on speed than just about anything else that we do. I'm also going to put timestamps, so if you're just looking for something specific, whether it is Lightroom or Photoshop, you can go in the description and hit the timestamps. I will also add some articles in the description that go more in depth about the process. So first thing we're gonna do on a Mac is we'll come up here to the Apple and we'll go about this Mac. And it's gonna bring up this little window that we see here. And unfortunately it's not big, so I will have to zoom in. And if you're using a PC, basically this is gonna be very, very similar because I'm also running an Intel processor, which most of you are gonna be running. If you are running the new Apple M processors, what you're gonna be looking more at is the amount of cores, the memory size. The first thing that I have is an eight core i7 processor. Now, there's different generations of i7 processors, so make sure that you have a later one that's gonna make a difference. Now I have a 3.8 gigahertz, eight core Intel i7 processor, and basically they go i3, i5, i7, i9 is top of the line, all right? More cores, the faster it can process, faster the gigahertz, the faster it can process. So you wanna make sure that you have a processor that can keep up with Adobe Photoshop. The next is the big one, and that is the internal memory. I have 64 gigabytes of memory. And if you ever look on the specifications page, it might say that Photoshop will run with four gigabytes. Well, it might run, but not well. The second part is you could probably run Photoshop pretty efficiently with eight gigabytes. However, if you want to run another program alongside of it, it's going to eat up some of that memory. So that's where having excess memory is going to be beneficial because it will allow you to run multiple programs at the same time. What I know when I was teaching classes with Zoom, we always ran into the problem that students were having to run the operating system, Adobe Bridge, Adobe Photoshop and Zoom at the same time and their computers would crash. Well, even though they had eight gigabytes of memory, which should be sufficient, that's just for Photoshop. That's not including anything else that you might wanna run. So memory is a key one. I would suggest at least 16, if not more. I have a graphics card. Most computers are gonna have some sort of integrated graphics card, but that's not gonna be as helpful in this process as the processor and the memory. So let's go ahead and close that out. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here and go to Lightroom Classic and Preferences. And if you're on a PC, some of these options might be in a different location, but you wanna find Preferences. And then we're gonna come in here and go to Preferences. I will slide this down. And you can see we have these little tabs and I'm selected on Performance. So right here it says use graphic processor. I just put mine on auto. Lightroom does take more advantage of a graphic processor than Photoshop does. The next one is camera raw cache settings. And notice this is camera raw. So this is the develop module or anything that's using the camera raw program. Even though we're in Lightroom, it is using the processor. So whether you're in Photoshop or Lightroom, what cache means is Information that the computer uses over and over again. Let's say that you have a preview and you just loaded these previews in. Well, instead of having to load the previews in every time, it's remembered in the cache, so you don't have to do that over again. This is a time saver. So we can set the size in gigabytes, right? And we can set the location. So I could either choose to put it on my internal hard drive or an external hard drive. If you're using an external hard drive, I would definitely suggest you use a solid state drive or SSD because you want that information to go back and forth quickly. Now I don't use Lightroom, so I have mine set pretty low, but if you do use Lightroom, this is something that you could definitely increase. 
so you can store more cache in a certain location. You can limit your video cache size here, and that's the performance information inside of preferences. So we'll go ahead and close this out, and we're gonna go up here to File, and we're gonna to go to Optimize Catalog. So if your computer is running slow, you can choose to optimize your catalog to get that thing running faster. The next thing we're gonna do is go up here to Lightroom and go to Catalog Settings. And under Catalog Settings, you can see my total size is nine gigabytes. So I could reduce that by removing my previews. Right here, it's saying my standard preview size is 5,120 pixels, which is the resolution of my screen. It's on auto. That is extremely large. Most people are not gonna do that. Make sure that your computer can support that. If you want to choose something else, you can come down here and choose the size of your standard previews. You can also choose the quality. So we have medium, high, and low. The last thing that we have is automatically discard one-to-one -one previews. So when you look at an image like this, that's usually the resolution at one-to-one -one size. If you want to remove this preview, which takes up a lot of room on your computer, if you use Lightroom and you take a lot of images, this can be something that's beneficial unless you do want to keep that around for a long period of time. Look, if you don't shoot a lot of images and you want to be able to access your previews all the time, you can come in here and put never. You could do after one day or one week. Personally, I would prefer one week versus 30 days, and I'm just going to leave it on 30 days for now. So that is a way to increase the performance of Photoshop by controlling these catalog settings. So if you wanna remove images or previews from Lightroom, you have two options. You can either remove the previews manually, or you can also remove the whole image from the catalog as well. For images, you don't think you're gonna use them again, and I loaded these just so I could do that. These are easy to remove. First thing you would do is bring up in the grid format and I'm going to select all these images. So I'm going to hit command A to select everything. I will come up to library and then you're going to drop down. So you're going to drop down to previews and right here it says build standard, build standard, discard one to one previews. So where we saw we could remove them every 30 days if we want to just go ahead and do that right now. We can click on discard one-to-one -one previews. I can click that. And if I click on this, it's going to remove all those images. Now I'm not going to do that in this case because I need to still use these for this video. So I'm gonna hit cancel. If you wanna remove these images from the catalog, what you would do is after you've selected all your images, you're gonna come up here to photo and click that and you're gonna come down here and it's got the option to remove the photos remove selected photos, remove photos from catalog, or delete rejected photos. In this case, I actually don't just wanna remove them because if I remove the photos, it will delete them, but they'll still be in the catalog. I wanna remove the photos from the catalog. So in this case, I'm gonna click that, and that's, okay, of course, deleting all those images from the catalog. So those are the different ways that you can speed up Adobe Lightroom Classic to get better performance. So let's go ahead and head on over to Photoshop. All right, so we are inside of Photoshop and just like the computer specifications, those are gonna be exactly the same. You're gonna come up here to Photoshop and then you're gonna drop down to Preferences, General. And we're gonna drop down here to Performance. Now inside of performance, this is where most of your optimization is gonna be going on. So right here it says RAM. If you remember when we said we had RAM on the computer, so if it went up here to about this Mac, the RAM is this memory. How much of this do we wanna to allocate to Photoshop? So in my case, I'm allocating 41,979. Does that mean it's gonna use it all, all the time? No, that's just how much I'm allocating towards the program. Do I wanna use my graphic processor? So right here, I have that option to select that, all right? History states, now most people wouldn't think this would matter, but when you're working in Photoshop and you get a whole bunch of layers over here on the right-hand side, this 
will eat up your memory. So if you have the default, which is 50 states, that's going to take up a certain amount of space. But if you wanted more and you raise this up to, let's say, 500, that would, could take up a whole bunch more space and you might need to increase the cache size of your program. So controlling this is gonna make a difference. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to scratch disk. Now scratch disk is free space on a computer that your computer uses to process information. This does not have anything to do with your, your processor. This is just free space. So let's say your hard drive was completely full and you get an error that says scratch disk full. That means there's no more space to work, all right? I advise people to never save photos to an internal hard drive because basically it's going to eat up the space and the speed of your computer. You should always save the photo files externally. Same thing with video. My computer's quite large and I have 674 gigabytes of free space. So I have enough to use for scratch disk. But if you wanted to allocate the scratch disk to a different location, let's say you had an SSD, so this is an SSD, I could allocate space on an external hard drive to be used as a scratch disk. So the key here is to make sure that you have at least 100, if not more. Less than that, it's not gonna work. So you could see this drive is almost full. I wouldn't want to use that for scratch space. Well, that's it. That is how you can increase the speed, performance, and remove information inside of the program to make everything work faster inside of Photoshop and Lightroom. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can always leave those below. And don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>